Hello, my name is Eric Chow. I'm from the University of California, San Francisco. Today, I'm gonna to talk to you about Illumina Next Generation Sequencing Sample Preparation. So for today's talk, we'll do a brief review of next generation sequencing, then we'll cover DNA and RNA library preparation methods. Followed by that, we'll go over bead-based sample cleanups, which are used really commonly in a lot of these protocols, and we'll end with sample quantification and QC of your libraries. So first, a brief review of Lumina sequencing. And as a reminder, we do have a video of this on the iBiology website that goes into more, uh, more depth. So Lumina sequencing occurs in these flow cells depicted on the left-hand side, and it's an optical sequencing method. Within these flow cells are oligos that are on the surface of the flow cell that capture libraries that are to be sequenced. And to prepare these libraries, we need to add adapters, which are these colored portions, onto our inserts that we want to sequence. Once a library has been captured onto the surface of the flow cell through multiple rounds of amplification, uh, you generate other strands and eventually you generate many, many copies of each of these strands on the surface of these flow cells. And these clusters of molecules are what get sequenced. And over here, I'm just depicting a schematic of how the sequencing works. So if we were to imagine that we have several different clusters of different molecules on the surface of the flow cell, and we run through the sequencing process where each of the bases are labeled by a different color, and we do this for multiple cycles, we can build up the sequence of each of those individual molecules. And so if you follow the top left cluster, uh, which is yellow on the first cycle over here, you can see that it starts off as a yellow color, then becomes blue, red, red, green. And if we use the color scheme over here, we can decode that as an AGCCT. With the bottom right-hand cluster, it's blue, green, yellow, yellow, and then red, and this can be decoded as GTAAC. And so DNA library preparation is a process of adding those adapters that allow your DNA molecules to become captured and then sequenced onto these Illumina sequencing instruments. And so the goal is to add those adapters, and there are two different methods that I'll cover today for DNA library preparation. These are TrueSeq style and Nextera style methods. And then I'll go over enrichment strategies in, for the process of selecting certain DNA molecules that you want to sequence. So with TrueSeq style DNA library preparation, you begin with DNA uh, that's a long, uh, long molecule depicted in gray on the top left-hand side. The first step is to fragment that DNA into smaller bits that are appropriately sized for the Lumina sequencers. And these are generally, generally in the hundreds of bases uh, of length. This fragmentation results in DNA fragments uh, that are not polished, so they have certain overhangs on different ends. And the first step to repair those ends is to uh, blunt the ends using a mixture of different enzymes. This will generate double-stranded DNA that has no overhangs. And the next step is to add a single A base so that you have a single A overhang on your DNA inserts. And this allows the next step, which is ligation of the adapters. So the adapters are these colored molecules over here. And these adapters have a T overhang that allows it to base pair with the A overhangs on your inserts. And then this undergoes a ligation reaction. And at this point, you have a complete library that can go on for sequencing. If you don't have enough material, you can amplify this up using PCR, using primers that prime off of the adapter sequences that you've ligated on, and you can generate many copies. And so this would be a PCR prep uh, to do the amplification. You can also have PCR-free preps, where you don't do any PCR amplification if you have enough material. And these can, both of these uh, molecules can go onto the sequencer. Another method of preparing DNA libraries is this Nextera process, which takes advantage of this property of transposases that allow them to insert DNA molecules into other large pieces of DNA. So again, if we start with, uh, let's say, genomic DNA that hasn't been fragmented, and we add these transposase enzymes that have the adapter sequences loaded onto them, these transposases will insert these DNA sequences into the DNA and actually fragment them into smaller bits. So in a single reaction, you fragmented the DNA and added partial adapters. The next step is to undergo a PCR reaction that'll use these partial adapters as priming sites for the PCR reaction to complete 
the library preparation and add the rest of the adapter sequences onto the molecules. So with these next Terra DNA library preps, you do have to do PCR. There isn't a PCR free version that you can do. So a lot of times you may not want to sequence every piece of DNA that's in your sample. And uh, let's say that, for instance, you're only interested in the coding regions of the human genome, which makes up a small percentage of the entire genome. It'd be a waste to sequence the entire sample because you're sequencing mostly things that you're not interested in. And so there are different enrichment strategies that allow you to target specific areas of the genome of your, or your sample for sequencing. And so in this case, let's pretend that the regions in pink and the DNA are the regions that you want to sequence. The first method uh, is a capture-based method. In this method, you generate a standard DNA sequencing library using either that Nextera or that TrueSeq uh, library prep method that we went over earlier. Uh, but once you've created that library, you have a mixture of molecules that have both the regions of interest in pink, but also these regions of interest that aren't of interest in gray. You have a panel of DNA oligos uh, that bind to your regions of interest uh, that also have a biotin molecule attached to it. So you take your DNA that includes both regions of interest and not interest, you add in these probes that allow you to capture specifically those pink areas of interest, and then you'll pull them down with beads using that biotin handle. You do some washes, and at the end, you have enriched for molecules that include those regions of interest. A second method is to use PCR amplification using lots and lots of different PCR primers. And in this method, you start with your genomic DNA and you design primer sets that will amplify up your regions of interest. And these primers also have partial lumen adapters at the end. You undergo a round or several rounds of PCR to amplify up these regions. And you wind up with uh, uh, some enrichment, but you don't have a complete library at that point. What you need to do is a second PCR reaction uh, to add on the final portions of the Illumina adapter to get a sequenceable molecule.